Hey everyone, welcome back to Biological Imaging. I'm Joe DeGeorgis. Today we're going to switch things up a little bit. Instead of using the compound microscope, we're going to use a stereo, or what's commonly called a dissecting microscope. And the scopes that we have here are called Zeiss STEMI 2000s, and they're called a stereo microscope because there's two light paths. There's one for the, for the um, left eye and one for the right eye, and you can see down at the bottom here that there's two uh, lenses at the end of the microscope. It might be a little bit hard to see, but there are two. And that allows you to maintain stereo vision. And I'm just going to set this in the stand here. There we go. Yikes. So the stereo vision allows you to have depth of field. So when you're doing something like a dissection, you can tell that one hand is higher than the other or that the scalpel is at the level of the tissue or something like that. So you need stereo vision. You don't have stereo vision in a compound microscope because you're looking with both eyes through a single microscope objective. So what happens is the light enters the microscope objective and they split the light information, some of it going to your right eye and some of it going to your left eye. And in some circumstances, they break it up three ways. They have, a, these are binocular eyepieces. And then the third port for the camera is called the trinoc port. So this is binocular for two, uh, monocular if it were just one, and trinocular if it's three. So this microscope um, actually breaks the light down into right and left eye. And then there's a lever back here that takes light from one of the eyepieces and sends it to the camera. But anyway, this is called a trinoc port. The light source is on this particular microscope is in the back mounted to the stand and there's a on off button on the right hand side and I'm going to push that button on and you can see that light comes out the is illuminating this flower that I picked out of our biosoil outside of the science building. And there's also a knob to increase and decrease the brightness of the light on the subject matter. Again, like the compound microscope, there are two eyepieces, obviously one for each eye, and the oculars can move in or out depending on the distance between your eyes and to focus both eyepieces you start with one like the one for the left eye and you would close your right eye and focus with this focus knob back here this focuses the sample in this case we're moving the microscope up and down relative to the sample that was different than the compound microscope where we move the stage with the sample on it closer or further to the microscope objective. But at any rate, there's a focus knob on either side. And to focus the left eyepiece, you would look through the, the, the eyepiece and use this focus knob until your subject was in focus. And then once the subject is in focus with your left eye, you open your right eye and close your left eye, and then you rotate this piece of the eyepiece, which allows you to focus now your right eye to the sample. And when you're finished, uh, the eyepieces will be the right distance, hopefully, so it's comfortable for you, and things will be in focus with both the left and right eye. So this microscope is fairly simple to use compared to the compound microscope. This dial is magnification. So you can have a low magnification or a high magnification. This is equivalent to a macro lens on a camera. It's kind of like a magnifying glass. Of course, everything else is the same because we're going to mount the camera that was on the compound microscope onto the stereo microscope and I'm going to turn the camera on. I'm going to tighten the camera to the microscope a little bit. 
and I'm going to find the EOS utility software. Find EOS. And of course, we want EOS Utility 2 and Remote Shooting. And here we have our control panel. I'm going to make a new folder. So I'm opening up the folder icon. I'm going to Browse. I'm going to select Desktop because that's where I want my folder to be. And finally, New Folder, and I'll say Joe's dissecting microscope images, something like that. Create and open and OK. And now we have Joe dissecting microscope image here, this folder. And we can open up Live View. And it's blacked out now because the light is going to these two eyepieces. On this particular version of the STEMI 2000, there's a lever in the back and I need to move the lever over to the left and now you can see that there's an image formed in the remote live view window and you can see that uh, you can see the flower there. It's not in focus at the moment. Um, so to focus, again this is the focus knob and I'm going to crank this closer to the flower. And it turns out that in this particular case, I can't get close enough to the flower with the microscope. So I have to readjust the whole system. And to do that, I need to hold this part of the microscope so that the microscope won't fall. And I'm going to loosen a knob that holds this whole unit to this metal post. So I'm going to hold this with my left hand and I'm going to loosen, oops, sorry, loosen the knob, lefty loosey, and I'm going to slide this down a little bit on the post and then I'm going to retighten the knob. So now we're closer to our flower and you can see that parts of it are in focus and then I can focus my microscope with the focus knob and these are meant to bend and we've said this before that in photography you're photographing the light and how it interacts with its subject matter so it's extremely important to play around with a light source so that you get nice lighting on the sample and it can dramatically change how the sample looks. You can point it directly at the flower. Let's see if I'm going to move this flower a little bit and try to center it like that and then focus it a little bit. And now I can take my photograph. Um, at the moment, let's check our shutter, one thirteenth of a second. So that's too slow. We would want a faster shutter speed. Now I can turn up the light source all the way to the top. Now it's only one thirtieth of a second, so now I have to adjust the ISO in order to compensate for exposure. So if I go up to 3200, my shutter's at 1 over 250, which is fine, and I'm going to take my photograph. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, to do a white balance, we need something that's white, like a paper towel, and I can move the flower off, and you can see that the white balance is way off. So I click on the window, click on the eyedropper, say OK, and click on this part here, which is the towel, and you can see that it takes out all the color. It's just, it's just um, grayscale. The paper looks like it, it, there's a grayscale to it. Uh, 
unclick the eyedropper and close the window and now we can move our specimen back in place and refocus on some aspect, some element of the flower like that. I'll take another photograph. Okay, and now if we want to go up in magnification, we simply turn this knob, the magnification knob, and refocus. Let's see if I can go over to some of these petals. Take my photograph. Let's try one of the stem of the, the leaves. So just refocus here. take my photo and if I want it to be a little bit lighter for instance then I can go over here to exposure compensation click on exposure compensation and go up let's just go up one third of a stop now my shutter's at one two hundredth of a second and we get a little bit brighter image okay that's it for today the stereo microscope is a very simple microscope to use it's perfect for photographing things like flowers and other types of plant material. Next week, I'm going to collect some marine invertebrates and show you how to use this microscope to photograph some of those critters. See you next time.